Chapter Five. We are going to talk more about what we can do about biodiversity after we understanding some of the concepts in Chapter Four already, and after this chapter, you'll be and、uh, you'll be able to explain how human actions cause the loss of global biodiversity, the value of ecosystem services. How can we use policies as tools to protect biodiversity, reduce biodiversity loss, and finally, I have a good exercise for you to understand how reintroducing species can restore the whole entire ecosystem. Nothing can survive on Earth alone, and that is a part of the big picture. So this is kind of similar. So the first concept when I talk about environmental science, everything is interrelated. Interrelatedness is a core concept of environmental science. And humans do have power to conserve biodiversity. Some people say it's so bad, it's whole place, it's so messed up. There's nothing we can do. That is not true. For example, there's two species of salmon, one living in the Copper River Basin. Another living in the Columbia River basin. There are two same same species of salmon. One is flourishing, and one is declining due to the human activities, the over harvesting, over exploiting, exploiting. So eventually, the government put the fish on the endangered species list, and that kind of restored the species. So example, this example tells us as humans we can conserve biodiversity. Why? A quick message here, because we are going to talk about this again later. A decline in species diversity often indicates a decline in ecosystem health. So, if the one species is not doing very well, that's a bad sign for the whole ecosystem. If one species Dying out in one area—that is a bad news for all the species on the planet. We want to protect biodiversity because ecosystems are of great value to us. We cannot live without our ecosystems. And the third thing I want to introduce here is intrinsic value. Intrinsic value meaning the value of living organisms. Um, they have their own value apart from human use. So this is this is kind of、um, biocentric, or we can say eco ecocentric. This is we see things as have values apart from our application. It's not like if it's not useful, they don't have value. So the value of biodiversity. I want to use the medicine as. An example. Please read、uh, the article I, I attached to D2L. What is bioprospecting? That is looking for potentially valuable genetics resources and biochemical compounds in nature. And I have a question for you here. How many anti-cancer drugs approved by FDA were developed from natural products in this period? It's about like fifty to sixty years. Periwinkle is a famous anti-cancer drug. This is the periwinkle flourishing in Madagascar. And please read the article and give me one answer, okay? What is the status of Earth's biodiversity? It's really bad news. The sixth mass extinction is underway, greatly caused by human actions. So we humans cannot deny it's caused by us, and it's going through a rate. I remember I in the last chapter I mentioned like ten thousand、uh, times higher than the natural rate. And just to give several examples, what we humans do to cause the loss of Earth's biodiversity, we cut off the trees. We destroy the rainforest, convert grassland and rangelands 
into agriculture in agricultural lands. We over hunting, over harvesting, over fishing, and we emit a large amount of greenhouse gases, gonna cause global warming, loss of Arctic ice, and cause the sea level rise and the massive flooding effect on water resources that means we overdraft water and we pollute the water so this is just several on the long list and we do a bunch of other things but those are the biggest issues alteration of habit habitats so from that list i just went over with you we destroy the habitat habitats for the living creatures through agriculture deforestation urbanization and some habitats are fragmented to the point the species lose needed levels of survival please watch uh, the video i post on d2l what is fragmentation this is very important concept for you to understand when we fragment the habitats why the species is doing dramatic, uh, dr dramatic, dr drastically not healthy and leading to extinction. Also, I have this uh, wonderful Annenberg lesson for you to watch about fragmentation. So please view the video. And from the graph on the right side showing here, the area protected was much less or much less than the area destroyed so that's the status okay the second thing i want to mention what humans do to destroy the biodiversity is over exploitation of resources one example is the salmon i mentioned in the beginning of the chapter right and this is a juvenile fish the juvenile fish live in the fresh water and then they migrate to the ocean, the salt water, and their appearance changed. And then they further change to adapt the salt water. And then they go back to the fresh water to spawn. So when we build up dams, right, to, to prevent them from returning to the fresh water, we greatly cut off the populations. And sadly, 90% of the fish in the ocean is already done due to modern technology. So that modern technology could be a blessing and can, can be a curse. And overfishing is a global disaster. Read the article, please, on T2L. And my question here is how many tons of fish were thrown away for one ton of shrimp? And the third thing we do is introduction of invasive species, either intentionally or accidentally. What are in invasive species? I have an article for you to read on D2L. It's really interesting. Please read. They don't have any natural predators. They're general, uh, generalists, which means they're not picky. Okay, they're not picky about where they live, they are not picky about what they eat. That's why they reproduce so rapidly. And they have effective dispersal mechanism. Dispersal means from move from one area to another, and they can successfully outpeat natural species. And these two example of invasive species. And I also put a bit of a picture of us as humans here. And I want to challenge you with this question, why humans are invasive species? Just use what you just learned and think about why humans are invasive species. And I have an interesting article for you to read on YouTube. So we also overdraft to water and we also pollute water. And we also cause the ocean acidification and temperature of increase of the ocean. You need to know the uh, symbiotic relationship between algae and the coral. 
the algae like to live with the coral and give coral the brilliant colors. Um, why? Because the algae can do photosynthesis and pass nutrition to the coral. And the coral have produced some waste and become the essential nutrients for the algae. So they like, like each other. When the algae was stressed, and they, they will leave the coral, and the coral will die. That's called the coral bleaching. This will uh, conclude. This concludes the first part of my lecture here.